We have to make sure that the politicians are held accountable. Every administration had the ability to put a ban on asbestos. When it comes to asbestos, it really is about power, money, uh, and politics. I have the distinct honor of awarding the Irving uh, Selikoff uh, Achievement Award. And I can't think of a more receptive person than Dr. Takala, who I've known for a long number of years when he was working at the International Labor Organization. And his work has been instrumental to me. I read most of the papers that he has written. And I also am in awe of the passion that he has for the plight of the world's worker. It's not just asbestos, but it's on all types of occupational diseases and injuries that he has spent his life trying to prevent. So it's with great pleasure that I am able to present this Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Takla. Thank you, Dr. Lehman. Thank you, Dick. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great opportunity today uh, for me. For you, it's another opportunity to have another accent, Finnish accent. Accent Finnois for Eric. So I think this is something what, what happens only once in a lifetime. So I start a little bit from the history. Asbestos has been known for thousands of years and used for thousands of years. Um, asbestosis has been identified maybe 150 or 100 years ago. But the first uh, record, official record, international record in an authoritative source was 1938 that asbestos may cause cancer. It was two British doctors, Dr. Gloin and Dr. Meerweather, who write in the first supplement or the first encyclopedia of the International Labor Office telling that they don't have enough information in 1938 to say that it's really carcinogenic. But I, I have to quote exactly, there is sufficient evidence to warrant careful observation in the future. Um, that evidence was brought by Irving, Dr. Irving Selikov, of course, maybe 30, 25, 30 years later. And that was really, really the breakthrough in terms of asbestos fighting in the world or or also now what we call banning of asbestos. And I think right after that in the history, and I came to the picture already, 1986, ILO finally, International Labor Organization, set the Convention of, on Asbestos. It might not have been today, if you look at it, not maybe the best convention in the world, but it was a compromise at that time. You already had the asbestos lobby for asbestos at that time, and then on the other side we had the workers and trade unions and so and and impressive, or or um, what what is the word, uh, committee governments, equally promoted, particularly from the northern part of the Europe, committed uh, for um, uh, having regulations and control of asbestos. Uh, then I was already working for the ILO. I, I came to the real picture. Uh, when we established a globally harmonized system of classification and labeling, chrysotile was immediately then classified as carcinogenic. It was an ILO, WHO, UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, joint uh, decision that chrysotile is carcinogenic. That was in the 1990s. And the final blow to the asbestos happened in 2006. I had the honor to have all the European countries supporting that already at that time, 2006. And then we had trade unions represented by whom? Peggy Seminario from AFL-CIO. Best regards to Peggy if you happen to see her. Uh, I think she, she did excellent work in that particular uh, 
conference representing 190 governments, 190 workers, and 190 employers. Unanimously, we agreed on that particular thing on asbestos. And I think it was a major big breakthrough telling not only that asbestos is dangerous, but all types of, including chrysotile, is carcinogenic, and listing what are the measures to fight. So this is one part of my history in, 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 in the past. At the same time, the ADAO and Linda and so on, you have done the next step to look at that regulatory part in, put into practice, and I think you have done marvelous work, not only in the United States, but all over the world. You, you, you are known everywhere in the world for uh, finding ways how to ban asbestos in the world. What are the practical ways to, to eliminate the exposures? I'm honored and uh, really appreciate the uh, Dr. Irving Selikov Award tonight. And I really appreciate all those people who have been supporting this kind of thing. And it's one part of my history and it's one part of, hopefully, asbestos big, big, um, history as well. Uh, <clears throat> this may be a small step for mankind, but a giant leap for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed.